Hi everybody, my name is Sandy Alnock and I'm excited to be guesting here in the classroom. I am the founder and executive director of Operation Right Home and I'm a crafter and airbrusher and Copic fanatic and I want to show you these two stamp sets. These are brand new from Hero Arts. They're fundraiser stamp sets for Operation Right Home. They have a whole bunch of them but these just came out and they're called Stamp and Cuts. And each one of the stamp and cut sets that Hero Arts makes now has a little mini stamp set and it also has a couple of dies. So the stamp sets are three by four and it has two dies that may or may not fit exactly one of the elements, but they always complement them. So they go really well with them. This particular one has lots of little stamps that go together in phrases and then it has arrows that are both in the die cut and the stamp version. The other one is the foxes. I just adore little foxes. So it's got two fox stamps, a little sun, it's got just all kinds of fun little sentiments to go with it. And the dies that go with it are a heart and a sun. And the little sun that's in the stamp set fits in there. And you don't have to line up all those little tines around the sun, all those little rays. This is the craft assistant. And the reason it's called a craft assistant is it's, gonna, it's like having an extra hand. So you're going to love it. It's very thin metal, as you can see. And mine's also used because I got fingerprints on it. So it's really perfect. And it's meant to be used with another product. So it's 12 by 12. And it's supposed to be used with the magnetic masking material. And if you don't know what that is, you are going to be so excited. This is a pack of them. They're 8 by 10 sheets. There's 5 in every pack. And it's this really flexible magnetic material. So it's great for masking for both airbrush, for any kind of spraying, that kind of stuff. You could die cut it, you could punch it. Lots of really great things you can do with it to mask things out and then be able to use them on your projects. And this holds it down onto the craft assistant and you don't have to have a third hand to try to hold everything still while you're doing your work. We're going to start with the stamping. And I stamped everything onto the scratch paper first to kind of get an idea of what I wanted. And I'm changing things as I go, but at least this serves as an initial guide to what I want to do on my card. So I've got this, this vertical line where I'm going to do my chevrons, my sentiments, I've got the fox placed. I decided I didn't want the little fox says sentiment on it. So I'm kind of you know, on the fly making it up as I go. And yeah, that's kind of how I go. So I'm going to use my ruler and my mat underneath of this to line up a uh, horizontal line so that I can get my stamping relatively straight because I'm a terrible stamper. I say this all the time. People don't believe me. And really, you have no idea how many times I've stamped this to get it right. And this one you're going to see is actually one that I blew it in the airbrushing, so I had to stamp it again. So the one you're going to see once I get started is a little straighter than this one because I kept learning as I go and kept being more careful as I started doing my stamping. This is the vertical line that I started out with for my chevrons. I actually moved it in, in the version you're going to see in just a minute, and I'll explain why. I'm stamping all of my sentiments in Hero Arts Black Ink. Anything you get a good black with is good, and it doesn't matter if it's not Copic friendly as long as you're not going to use marker strokes with it. So all my sentiments are in Hero Arts Black. I'm lining my right now up with the top of yours because I thought that would look better. And then I switched to Memento since I'm going to color my fox with marker strokes instead of airbrush. So I needed something that would play well with Copics. So I have two inch labeling tape, post-it tape, that I'm going to use for masking my little fox and I'll fussy cut him out. The reason I didn't use the magnetic material is it would put another thick layer underneath the, mag the, the magnetic layer that I'm going to be using to airbrush through. And so that would lift it up too high. So I just wanted a really thin layer to cover him up while I was doing the rest of my work. So here is the finished stamping and I'm ready to do the die cutting. So I've die cut my arrows out of a piece and I'm going to put this in my stamp pocket so I have it at all times whenever I use this set and can use it for my cards over and over and over again. I took the little arrow that I die cut out and I'm going to modify it. I'm going to trim off just the edge, just the top leading edge on both sides. And that is going to create, when I pop it back into the shape, it's going to create a little mask for a chevron. So I wanted to do a, a rainbow chevron all up and down the card. And I thought that would be really fun to do really bright colors. 
I have my line marked and the line is moved. Shouldn't have been moved, but it was. So we're gonna just go ahead, I'll show you the, the fix I had to do for it later and why it was an issue. But I'm lining up my chevron. I put little quarter inch tick marks all along that line. I don't know if you can see them on the video or not, but I put them in there so I could space my chevrons out appropriately and keep them apart from each other. Because when you're using this masking material, you can't see through it. I'm using paper, scratch paper, to protect my card from any overspray that might happen. Double checking that I've got my chevron straight and now I've got my airbrush out. This is the Copic Airbrush Grip and mine is a little beat up. I use it a lot, but the marker just fits right in, just snaps into place, and all you do is press the little button. If you're interested in Copic Airbrush and what you need to buy in order to get started with Copic Airbrush, look on YouTube for the Copic Airbrush Buyer's Guide. I think I'm the only one that has a video out with that, but it'll talk about all of the different options, the compressors, the air cans and how much air is in them, how long they last, all that different stuff. So each of my chevrons I'm going to use two colors with. I'm going to use a light and a dark because I want all of their edges to be a little bit darker than the inside. So I'm going to show you one chevron and then we're not going to peek until we're done. How's about that? So I'm going to move it up, move it up to my next tick mark, quarter inch up, and replace my little arrow replace my masks for the, the rest of the card, the orange papers, and then airbrush again. And I'm doing the dark first and then the light, and then the next time I do the light and the dark. So it's just one less switch of the marker, and it goes a little bit faster that way. Okay, I, I lied. We, we peaked one other time. So now I'm gonna just do a bunch of blues at the bottom, and then I'm gonna work my way up to purples before we hit the sentiment. So I'll just keep moving up little by little. And this is fl fluorescent violet FV2, and I love this purple, but it doesn't have any friends in the in the color world of Copic, so I use dark blues to shade it. So here is just a tip: if you start getting sticky, if if the ink gets just a lot of coats on there, then just wipe it off with some colorless blender. I'm doing a quick wipe, so I'm not worried about that haze of purple. But if you if you use a little bit more and a clean paper towel, mine, mine is just dirty, that's why it's not cleaning it all off, then you'll end up with um, a really nice clean mask that you can put away. So here it's gonna be a lot easier to see that we're lined up because I can see the line and make sure it's centered down my arrow every time I place it down. But I started with red violet shaded by purple and then I'm gonna move down further as I get down the card into red violet and orange and then orange and yellow and yellow and green and just keep moving down the rainbow and build this rainbow out. Hey, I thought while I was doing the rest of this airbrushing, I would tell you a little backstory on this video. I actually shot the artwork for it before this thing happened, but last week I had to say goodbye to my dog of 15 years, a beautiful golden retriever named Sierra. And I do miss that face of hers. <laughs> the uh, sentiment on this card couldn't be more perfect for it, so it's taken me a couple of days to get through this voiceover and explain what I'm doing. So thank you very much for tuning in and listening. And if you want to give it a like and uh, give that one for Sierra, that'd be wonderful. So here's the finished airbrushing and I'm just going to erase my pencil lines. It's got a really fun rainbow chevron now down one side, but you can also tell where my mistake was. I moved my line over. So now my right now is not centered in the arrows. <laughs> I look such a doofus. That's what I get for changing things on the fly, right? So my solution for that, of course, we crafters can come up with solutions, is to scrap, use a scrap piece of paper and add the sentiment to that. I airbrushed a couple of the matching colors on it and then I'll just pop it right on top. And no one will know that that was a big goober, right? Next, I wanna add a little sunshine behind the little fox's ear. So it's just kind of peeking out. I'm just doing a light spray, so I'm not gonna get real crisp image. I just want a little bit of sunshine behind them. And now I, I was debating coloring the fox in golden retriever colors, but I decided that would be too silly. So I'm still starting with a yellow color for the base at least. When I color my with my Copics, I tend to color the whole image first in the light color, and then I go to my darkest, which I'm doing here. And then I'll skip over to my medium color, 
and start blending from the, the darkest into the medium areas and stretching out those shadows just a little bit further. And then once I get all that part in, you notice I'm just not being really tidy when I'm going into the lighter areas because I'm going back in with my light marker, just going to fill those areas in, go over it with another coat. Now this is such a tiny image. I wanted to let it sit for a minute before I do some finishing touches on it. So I'm using my blue markers to do some shadows in the white areas and adding a little bit of a super light blue to just make that really feel white. And then I'm going to grab my colorless blender and push some of that color back in that I scribbled out because it is such a tiny image. And now that it's dried a little bit, I can go back in with my yellow marker again and really brighten up some of those areas and, and add more color to them so they blend a little bit better. So that is the finishing of the coloring. Now it's just a matter of popping it onto a card base. It's a top fold card. I just put a little dimensional adhesive underneath of it. And it's done, and I think it came out really cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button. Please feel free to ask some questions in the comments below, and I will see you guys another time. Take care. Bye-bye.